go and look at somebody else's code. But until that point, the worst way to learn is by, I, I think, looking at other people's code, especially when, if they're anything like me, it certainly doesn't stick with convention. It probably would be frowned upon by anybody who was a professional programmer because I have gotten to so many bad habits and sloppy techniques over the years. Um, but staying sort of relevant, I've just got a few other little quick topics to throw in there. Um, as I said, I haven't been I haven't had much time for tech over the last two weeks, but I have kept up with my social networks. So I've got a few things to say about Google Plus and uh, Diaspora, which uh, I have been sticking with. Um, Google Plus have introduced some games to their uh, their suite of uh, facilities now within the, uh, the Google Plus social network. Uh, nothing much really to say apart from there's a very famous saying which says you become the thing you hate the most. And I remember probably about a year ago or whenever Facebook started introducing games, I used to look down my nose at Facebook users playing these silly little online games. And now I find myself addicted to Crime City on Google Plus. So um, rather hypocritical of me, I'm sure, but uh, it's quite a good little game there. Um, what's noticeable, though, is that the hideously popular Angry Birds now finds a place itself on Google Plus as well, um, with a few little online extras, which I don't believe are available within the uh, Android version. And apparently there's a few extra levels which allow collaboration of some description with other Google Plus users. So that's Google Plus, and that's rolling on pretty much the same as it has been for the last few weeks. It's, I still find myself very much uh, in love with the whole system. I think it's very good. I've had some excellent talks there. The Hangouts uh, facility is brilliant, where you could have a, a webcam conference with numerous people. I think the record that I've seen on uh, my stream was one user had 42 people, I believe, at the same time. I can't find who that was now. Uh, very, very good. I know that um, Fab from the Linux Outlaws is a very big supporter of Google+, and he's certainly been very active on on my stream, uh, talking about a plethora of subjects. Um, maybe I'll guess very quickly. The, uh, oh. what, what's, what's the use? Uh, we had this discussion before, I'm sure you remember. Why would a, a person, what, what circumstance would motivate a person to use Google+. Right, well, for me, it's Google+, and Diaspora as well. Uh, are very good for when I've got something to say which maybe doesn't warrant an article on open bytes. I've, I like to write something of substance on open bytes. I like to have more than maybe a couple of paragraphs on there because I think if people are going to take the time to visit my site, they want something to read that's a little bit m more substantive than just a couple of seconds. Um, but then there's times with Twitter when 140 characters or identical will not do and will not serve my uh, purpose where I want to maybe make a comment on somebody else's article and 140 characters isn't just isn't enough. I may want to discuss with somebody about an issue. Now I can't really start opening up conversations on my site because that would probably bore 99% of the people who read it. So what that's for me is where Google Plus and uh, Diaspora Hang sort of fall into line. Um, Google Plus also got the very handy the facility of being able to throw up with people that have uh, agreed to share ch uh, chats between the two of them. I can open up a, uh, a, a little chat window to, my, say, my cousin or um, one of my other people that I follow, and I can instantly start talking to them. It gives me their status where they're online at the moment, and uh, it, it's really, really useful. And uh, Facebook. it is. It's, it's very much like. It's, yeah, it is very much like Facebook, and I think probably um, the similarities would probably hold back a lot of Facebook users that have invested a lot of time on Facebook from coming straight over to Google+. And I think that's why they've seen fit to, to throw in the games there, especially with a, a mainstream name game like uh, Angry Birds. That certainly would be a juicy carrot on a stick for many uh, many users of Facebook, maybe, that would uh, sort of consider coming over to Google+. But it's, it's very, very good. Um, I've got no issues with it at all. I know people have there's many different views about Google themselves, but I'm looking at this as a method for me to discuss the topics which I enjoy discussing, and for that, it's fantastic. It offers everything I want. Today, I'm not sure it was an article, but they said something about Google requiring that you give them a telephone number to join Google Plus now, or...? I can't remember whether you asked me for a phone number. Um, it, it seems familiar, um, and obviously they had the silly naming convention of insisting on your real name, and uh, which in itself, I think the intention was quite a good one because it it puts off the uh, the people maybe who would join for 
dubious means. But then again, what's to stop me calling myself anything that sounds reasonable? And it would be up to them to prove it. So I've given them a surname. Is that my real surname? That's up to them to prove or disprove. Then it sounds real. Um, they had a problem originally with me being Goblin Open Bites, or Open Bites Goblin. So I had to uh, use my real first name, which is Tim, and then give them a surname as well. Um, but like I say, until they can get to a stage where they can either prove or disprove that surname, then they've uh, let me onto the Google Plus uh, social network. Um, I don't know about the phone number. I'd have to double check. I don't think. I mean, if it had asked me for a phone number, I would just type in anything. Uh, and I always think about the situation with respect to the uh, right. So I think about two types of people here. Are actually, three. So one of them is the people who have established their so-called you know friends in Facebook, and now they see this part of the universe and they say, "Hold on a second. I might be very big in Facebook, but this Google thing, I'm just don't exist there. Or you know, I only have like you know five friends there." Mm. And then they realized, in proportion, I've always been a opponent of the uh, all those websites, which are essentially databases of people, and people have to improve their status in the database. So they work and labor for hours and hours trying to improve their status of the site. That's actually applies to, to some to some degree to Twitter as well, and all kinds of sites where there is this establishment of status based on people who are you supposedly connected. To. And even some coding sites. I mean, I'm on GitHub because I do some development there. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and there you have this thing of like followers and like people watching your code and collaborate with you. So you, you want to, to increase that number. It makes, you know, you're one of the important developers if you're being watched by loads of people. Uh, but the, the thing about it is, so, so, so we have this group of people who are in Facebook and they have their Facebook identity and brand. They see themselves as what they are on Facebook. And they see this part of the universe opening up and more and more people joining uh, Google+. Plus. Now, for some people, joining Google+, Plus and being among the first ones to, to join the site, would mean that they could improve their status in, a, in this whole new part of the universe, uh, getting all their friends and getting one of the, to be paid to be the famous users of the bigger users in, in Google+, Plus if they join early enough find more people, and then compete on a whole new ground with the uh, Facebook users. And to some extent, that's the same applies for Identica, I think, in Twitter. So you have these uh, two parallel universes. You know, you can have friends in one site, but the very same people who are on the separate site will not necessarily be connected to you. So you have to, like, completely work with different, completely separate databases. You couldn't, for, you couldn't just import and export your contacts very easily. Uh, and then there is the group who's never been on Facebook and doesn't even, that, that's, you know, that, that's, that's quite a big, I suppose, how many users do they have on Facebook now? Is it yet a billion or is it just like 600 million or something like that? Pass, I wouldn't know his answer to that. I think last time I heard it was something like a million, a billion or, and that was quite a few years back. Uh, obviously with duplicates and all kinds of spammers and SEO companies and marketing companies pretending to be people. So I don't really know what the true number of people is. And I think that's the reason Google actually tries to enforce that people do get the real names because before you know it, they'll just call themselves, you know, to keep the sure and, you know, and say, hey, how are you doing? Come to my side, this is me in the webcam. And seriously, they will have these, these, these people. And they have to have the policy in place to get rid of these accounts, even if it might be a real person. They do them pretty much sure. It's really hard to do that, especially on a mass scale. So they could have filters like, you know, of real names and likely real names. And if they find that your name is very unusual for a name, they'll just look at it and say, open bites? That doesn't sound like a surname. And they'll say, please correct your name, otherwise we'll assume it's not this person. But then again, you know, that, that's who is going to be exploited. You know? if, you're, if you're going to be a spammer, or if you're just going to have misuse the service, you know, you just call yourself, I don't know, Michael Jackson or something. They don't know. Well, maybe your name is not. They don't really know for sure. Actually, I, I, I know for sure. I know they have loads of people faking their names and just choosing celebrities mm. because they have to. Uh, so, so it's not exactly a solution. Well, well, like I say, I mean, I, I've never, I've never got into Facebook. Uh, the, the whole Facebook thing. I will, I will say about Google Plus uh, and yes, a bit of the Facebook part of deleting users' accounts because they come to me and they ask me how to do that. And you know the way the way Facebook is very cheeky about. It. So the way it works with Facebook, uh, they they allow you to disable your account or to deactivate your account. But if you want to delete your account, they, I I don't know if they fix it that. They don't really give you a button for it. You have to like take a URL and paste it into the book. 
it's, it's like a hidden URL. It's like a hidden feature. It's like an Easter egg. So how can the Easter egg count? And you have to know what you're doing. It's really it's not very easy to find out about it. So I, people come to me. And they know I don't like Facebook. Actually, I have like colleagues of mine. Like one of them, she, she would ask me, oh, you're a 